Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you. Uh, my name is Lloyd Williams. I'm honored to serve as president of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. And uh, I hope you appreciate the regal setting that we have asked uh, to host this special 2021 New York Police Department Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce Black History Month Awards Ceremony. Uh, let me just say uh, that um, in working uh, with uh, Commissioner uh, Dermot Shea and Deputy Commissioner Chauncey Parker, it has been an honor uh, to work together with them to figure out how we bridge the gap uh, that we all know exists uh, between the police department and our communities in New York City, particularly communities of color. And the commissioner's commitment to that effort is extraordinary. And we are honored to partner with he uh, and Deputy Commissioner Chauncey Parker, a great friend of ours, uh, and this is one of a series of initiatives that we are doing. Uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, we agreed to adopt four precincts uh, in Upper Manhattan, the 2-6 precinct, the 2-8 precinct, the 3-0, and the 3-2. And t uh, what we're doing with that is each of those precincts have uh, been assigned three community-based organizations ranging from the NAACP to 100 Black Men and Harlem Arts Alliance, Harlem School of the Arts and First Corinthian Baptist Church and West Harlem Development Corporation, et cetera. Uh, and those three community-based organizations are now the official partners of their designated precinct. And in March, we start uh, the, the actual initiative. And it will be to uh, break down barriers and barricades, to establish lines of communication, uh, and to recognize that in each of our communities, uh, the police precinct is our AAA tenant and that their success is critical to our success in our community. And uh, we need to start uh, communicating, respecting, and reaching out to each other. Uh, this is the next step of what we're doing. And uh, we're going to, on today, recognize three heroic police officers who uh, interfaced and intervened uh, at Cathedral Church of St. John's the Divine uh, in December uh, at an incident that if they had not stepped into it, we may have had a great loss of life. Um, and the uh, dean of the Cathedral Church, uh, Dean Daniels, is with us to participate in that. Yeah, yes, give him a hand. And then uh, towards the end of the program, we will uh, honor uh, three community affairs officers because the community affairs grouping is the real linkage between the NYPD and the community. And they've done a great, great job. So we have three officers that we will recognize. But in addition, it's a historic day. So when we say Black History Month, we mean history is, is being made. And what you're going to find is the acknowledgement and recognition of six of the top ranked officers in NYPD who happen to be black. And some of their appointments are first time appointments, historic appointments, and that's part of what we will do today. So without further ado, I'm very honored to introduce our MC uh, for uh, this afternoon's program, 
uh, I, when I saw him as he came and I asked him, did he get my email? Uh, because I emailed him a few weeks ago to let him know how proud I am of him and what an extraordinary job he's doing at WNBC4. And so a longtime friend of Harlem Week and the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, uh, we are honored that he has agreed to serve as our Master of Ceremonies for today's program, uh, the distinguished David Ushery. Ambassador Lloyd Williams, thank you. Because surely you have earned diplomatic status for your championing of Harlem and its business community, for sure. Thank you, everyone. What an honor to be here. I know we all have very tight schedules, so I won't ramble on like news anchors tend to do. But I am going to take a point of personal privilege. Rich Esposito called me the other day and asked me to do this, and I didn't even hesitate. Happy to be here, happy to do it in this great cavernous hall worthy of our honorees. When I hung up, I realized, though, that today is my wife's birthday. And uh, thank you. And Lloyd knows my wife. And I work a night shift, so that meant the morning was expected to be spent celebrating my wife's birthday, which included picking up my mother-in-law in East Harlem and bringing her over to our place. So when I broke the news to her that I would have to leave early for an event, let's just say this. In addition to the many calls he may have to make today, the police commissioner has to make one more. I'm not asking him to sing happy birthday, but he better come up with some poetry. Otherwise, I'm sleeping on his couch. But that being said, my wife surely understood as a native of New Yorker how important this day is. At times, look, we think that the press and the media and the police department are adversarial. And for sure, there are moments and there are challenging times. Stories need to be told, issues need to be addressed, certainly right here in our community. Issues that have hurt us over the past year. Issues not unique to our great city of New York, but certainly present. But we are not always adversarial. In fact, we often work together to do what's right and do what's best for this great city. We stand together at crime scenes. We stand together on major issues. And together, we had our roles to play to get this city through COVID, which we are still doing. Our reporter ranks were hurt by that. The police department ranks were hurt by that, and yet on the front lines. And so it is an honor to be here in this recognition for this Black History Month. When I started as a reporter on these streets of the city 28 years ago and dealing with DCPI, the upper ranks of the department looked very different. And when I say very different, everyone in the room knows what I mean. And the work that's been done by the people here and the people here matters, and it makes a difference. More work to be done, but we can certainly take a few moments today and celebrate the progress that's being made while still acknowledging the work that has to be done. So with that in mind, I will now welcome the man who I sat with in December for a year in review, a year he probably didn't expect, and I, first thing I said is, Commissioner, I feel like I've aged over the last year. And he sighed, and he said, we all have. Please welcome the police commissioner for the NYPD, Dermot Shea. Well, good afternoon, everyone, as I get myself situated here. And, and that does, David, seem like a long long time ago and regarding your birthday I think dispensation may be in order so that may be more appropriate than you ever wanting to hear me sing that would be the last thing that you would want to see or hear so good afternoon everyone and before I begin my prepared remarks I feel that we cannot do justice streaming this event and I, and I so wish that everyone was here with me today to see this beautiful hall but alas, we are here, so this will have to do. Lloyd, so much that I could say, to my friend Lloyd, I just want to say thank you first and foremost to Lloyd Williams, my friend and president and CEO of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, to Vincent Pedro, the president of the City College of New York, to the Reverend Clifton Daniels III, Dean of the Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine and Voza Rivers, Chairman of the Harlem Arts Alliance and retired NYPD detective. We should switch those two titles around. That's the claim to fame, first and foremost. And thank you also to Jeffrey Eaton, first Vice President 
of the New York State NAACP for the honor of joining us here today. And of course, to David, ushery of WNBC, our master of ceremonies. In preparing for today's event, I thought a great deal about the importance of community and its influence and intersection on the N NYPD. And what better time, as I spoke to Lloyd and myself, Chauncey Parker and others, amid Black History Month, to recount some of the rich stories of our heroes, of Sam Battle, the first black police officer who joined the NYPD in 1911, retiring as a lieutenant in 1941, 30 years. And I'll be hitting my 30th year in just a couple months. No plans to retire yet. Nobody behind me get any ideas. But Sam, who lived out his years on Strivers Row here in Harlem. I could tell the story of Al Howard, who you may know best as the owner of Showman's, the famous jazz club on 125th Street. But there was another side to Al. He was also a black police officer whose quick thinking and decisive actions in 1958 saved the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he was stabbed during a book signing in Harlem. When Dr. King recovered, he wrote a letter to the NYPD that states in part, quote, I have long been aware of the meaning of the phrase New York's finest when applied to members of the New York Police Department. From the moment of my unfortunate accident, I have concurred wholeheartedly in that appellation. There are none finer, end quote. I love his use of the word accident. I wouldn't call it an accident, but it shows the class of the man. I could also talk about Wilhelmina Holliday, the first African-American woman to serve as deputy commissioner of the NYPD, who touched so many lives, including Voza, who worked for her when he was a detective in the NYPD, and Jeffrey Eaton, who worked for her when serving as the president of the Mid-Manhattan NAACP, and so many others. As Voza says, Wilhelmina Holliday is truly a daughter of the NYPD, and a daughter of Harlem. Those are the stories I would like to tell and want to tell, but they're also the stories you already know. We might all be better served today by heart re heartfelt reflections on the prior year, a year that many of us would like to forget. The killing of George Floyd didn't happen in New York City, but it was certainly felt here. And conversations about a racial reckoning are happening everywhere in this country. While some of it has been painful, I know that in the long run, both for policing and for our city and for our country, it is a good thing. I believe we have an opportunity in this moment to move forward together on a path towards building mutual trust and redoubling our efforts to create a shared vision for public safety in our communities, our communities. As I've said, it's all about trust. And how do we as a police department earn back that trust from the people that we serve? First, there must be a hard and an honest moment of truth. We must acknowledge what is difficult to talk about sometimes, but the un uncomfortable, inconvenient, but also undeniable truth that more than 400 years ago, a caste system based on a narrative of racial difference, the color of your skin, was used to justify almost 250 years of slavery in our country. It was followed by more than 150 years of systemic racism, hard truths. These many years of racist policies and practices have caused, and more importantly, continue to cause, immeasurable harm. Also trauma, discrimination, and injustice for so many in our beloved United States. 
It exists in all aspects of our society. And it certainly exists as well in policing. Police have always been an inexexorable part of that story. Whether it was arresting runaway slaves or enforcing unjust Jim Crow laws, it's been a stain on law enforcement's rich history, but a stain nevertheless. We have to acknowledge this truth, and I do. And we must also acknowledge the NYPD's historical role in, at times in the mistreatment of communities of color, and I do as well, and I'm sorry for it. I'm not in a position as I stand here today before you in this beautiful hall to apologize on behalf of all law enforcement. I don't think that would be appropriate, and it's beyond my standing. But I can certainly, in my role, speak as the leader of the NYPD, both past and present, recognizing that we have inherited the burden of our collective history. Our challenge today is to ensure that we will not participate in or tolerate any of us any further inequality or justice. Across our great nation, the history of racism did not start with the police. America has, fo has fostered, however, generations of injustice. Communities of color have been and remain undeserved when it comes to quality education, housing, health care, social services, and job opportunities. This contributes to an unending poverty, hopelessness, and crime, which then leads to a disproportionate criminal justice system impact. I'm getting ready for today, I thought about my young days as a police officer, eight miles. Eight miles was the distance from when I would walk out of work, get in my car, drive home. Eight miles was a world of difference. And I would often ponder that. It was almost like you needed a passport. You were entering a different country. And the unfairness and the unjustness of it. But we can, we can work towards correcting that. All of us, police departments in all sectors of society, must look in the mirror. We must seize this moment in history if we are truly to achieve our country's guiding, yet sometimes unrealized vision of equality and justice for all. As a first step on our way forward, I pledge on behalf of the NYPD that we will do everything in our power to ensure that transparent, accountable policing, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religion, immigration, or economic status. Make no mistake, we all want the same things. We want them for each other, and we want them for our children. A New York City that is safe for all. A New York City that is fair for all. That begins with a police department that looks like the city it serves. And in my experience, there's no substitute for police officers who come from the communities that they serve. And the fact is, we are now a majority minority police force with more black, Hispanic, and Asian officers than ever before. Like any institution, however, the NYPD is imperfect. But it is absolutely, and I will believe this till the day I die, the greatest police department in the world, comprised of dedicated, caring professionals whose primary mission and goal each and every day is to keep others safe. And I say that knowing even in the NYPD, hard conversations again. We have officers that tell me stories and detectives that tell me stories about putting on a uniform, driving home, and then worrying about being pulled over in 2021. I personally have not gone through that, but I understand it's real even today. I also know that given recent events, recent tensions, and even peer pressure at school, that now might not be the time when young men and women of color might think about pursuing a career in law enforcement. 
That may be just because of what they've seen or heard. It may be because they fear that they won't be respected within their community or by their friends and family. To those young men and women of color, I paraphrase Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the NYPD. By becoming a part of it, you become part of the change. So I ask you to tell your children, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, become part of the solution that we all strive for. If you look at my command staff, some of whom are here today with us today, you can see two things. Number one, our commitment to talent and professionalism by picking the best people for the job. And secondly, that this is a police department that is constantly evolving and will continue to. They are lanterns lighting the path for the future of the NYPD. And so are the brave officers on my left that you can't see, who responded to the attacks on the cathedral just before Christmas. Thank you. And so are the three dedicated community affairs officers honored here today. And so are so many more members of our police department, your police department, that strapped on a uniform today and went out, out there to serve New Yorkers. I commend them all. Each of us up here today has been to too many crime scenes, standing over the bodies of people far too young to die. That too is a crisis and one we can only solve, I believe, together. I've also sat with these men and women inside hospital emergency rooms. Believe me, far too many times that I, I would like to remember in the past few months, waiting for word on the condition of an injured officer. Some are cases where police officers put their lives between themselves and an armed assailant. And tragically, so many times in the course of our careers, we've had to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, at funerals, mourning a loss, and paying tribute to one of our brothers and sisters in blue, killed in the line of duty while serving and protecting people of this great city. In my mind and in my heart, I know that the overwhelming majority of cops are good, fair, and courageous. I've often said they are the best this agency has to offer. The overwhelming majority of police officers get there through their entire careers without ever firing their weapon, something that not many people realize. The overwhelming majority of officers work their entire careers without a single civilian complaint. You wouldn't always know that. And more and more of our newest officers, as I've said, come from the city, live in the city, and look like the city. I know that the NYPD will continue to develop better ways to police. New reforms that encourage better community relations while ensuring community safety, I believe will write our own moment in history. A time when we turned the corner, found each other, listened to each other, and began to achieve these goals anew. The NYPD, our NYPD, I commit to you, is doing our part to fix this. But this is not a quick fix. This is not an overnight fix, Lloyd. This is, as I've said before, long term, roll up your sleeves, get to work, and let's get to it, fix. And we must do it together. And that's how we need to approach this. Our North Star is simple. It's to work with the community that we see, serve. The cornerstone of that philosophy is neighborhood policing. The NYPD already works very hard to build trust and strengthen relationships with all the people we serve, especially as I've been preaching now. I have a little bit of preacher in my, myself about the young people of this city, our future. And I know that together with our partners across the five boroughs, I am very confident that we can build on the progress that we've made. But it's a lot of work. The future of New York City depends, above all, on our unwavering commitment to safety, to fairness, and to justice. And today, your police department pledges to continue that fight with you. 
I believe together we can seize this moment. And shame on us, Chauncey, if we miss this opportunity. Reminded of the words in Dr. King's last book, where do we go from here? Quote, perhaps we are the ones we have been waiting for. Think about that. Perhaps we are the ones we have been waiting for to transform this reluctant nation into its best possible self, end quote. Thank you again for hosting us today and for honoring our members. One more round of applause for you. Most importantly, thank you for your continued support of the NYPD and our mission. May our vital partnership only strengthen in the coming years. Lloyd, once again, thank you very much. Commissioner Shea, thank you for the powerful words. As the commissioner alluded to, one of the bedrocks of our city's spiritual history and place of comfort also became a crime scene, which the NYPD responded to within seeming to us seconds. Please welcome the right Reverend Clifton Daniel III, who's Dean of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. Well, it's an honor to be here today. I, I should uh, speak to the obvious first, and that is I'm, I'm not a native New Yorker. Uh, you might be able to tell from my accent uh, as time goes along. But I feel a, very much a part of this city in the four plus years that I've been here. Uh, it has become home and this community of Harlem uh, has become my community. The cathedral is, is located within the bounds of Harlem. So I'm glad to greet you uh, as, as a native North Carolinian, but now as a citizen of New York and as a resident of Harlem, my community and the cathedral's community. And by the way, I think the 26th precinct is about the best precinct in the whole police department. I, we, uh, they're always there, ready to be helpful. Uh, Captain Sarubi and her staff and detectives. It, it's a wonderful relationship. And I've, I'm here with Keith Hinkson today, who's head of Cathedral Security who works closely with the precinct and uh, keeps the bonds tight. The, uh, the cathedral has committed itself through the years and into this day to serving the needs of our community and housing and justice and education and care for children and care for the elderly and of course for the spiritual needs of the community. And that is a form of valor. Uh, it takes courage to serve people who are hungry and needy and sometimes fractious and contentious. But that is valor, to serve one's neighbor. But there are also different kinds of valor. The kind of valor that I saw and experienced on December 13th and uh, let me tell you just a little bit about that. The, uh, the concert on the steps of the cathedral had taken place and was over, and that was a form of valor. We, we've taken the cathedral uh, to the front steps, to the, to the front porch of the neighborhood in order to ensure our presence and our witness, even though the cathedral is closed now for worship uh, due to the COVID crisis. So we finished the concert. I went down the steps in my uh, long purple uh, robe to greet people on the street. And as I was doing so, I heard what I thought were firecrackers. And finally, uh, in a couple of seconds, I thought, well, no way, that's not a firecracker. And then somebody said, oh my God, he's shooting. And I looked up and here was uh, a man standing on the top steps of the cathedral by the great bronze doors with guns in his hand shooting. And my reaction was, first of all, I thought, oh my God, 
I'm standing in a field of, of fire. And my second thought was, I might get shot. As I thought about it later, I wasn't afraid. I was more shocked and stunned. But as I thought about it later, I thought, this is what you folk do every day. You stand in the field of fire and get shot at. For me, it was so far in my life, one and only time. But I came to a deeper appreciation of what, what you folk do for me and for us and for the city. So thank you. Thank you for that. Well, as I've, I've started walking away with the crowd, a man fell and hit his head on the, the curb, fell down in the street, and I stopped to, to help him. Uh, I got in my security escort that day from the cathedral. Uh, I said, Dean, he said, you can't stop to help this man. You're too big a target. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you look like a big grape walking down the street. You're a big target. Get down. And he pushed me down on the street. And then he pulled me up by the arm and hustled me over to the gate where Keith was waiting. That was courage and that was valor, I thought. And as I was walking over to the gate, I saw two, two men. I didn't know who they were, but I realized suddenly they were police personnel who walked right into the field of fire that I was fleeing and took the action they had to take in that moment. And they did so with courage and with valor. Uh, in a way that I thought, I don't know if I could have done, if I could have done that. They were willing to sacrifice themselves for me and for everybody else standing on the street. Now, Jesus said, no man, no person has greater love than to lay down his life for his neighbor. And these guys, these two brave officers were willing to lay down their lives for us standing on the street. And I know you're willing to do the same, which only induces my admiration for you and my thanksgiving. So I, I want to thank Jason Harper Harris Gutierrez in Kensington. Thank you, thank you all for what you've done. God bless you, God protect you. You're always welcome at the cathedral. Come by and have a cup of coffee or just come by and I'll look forward to seeing you. But my deepest and profoundest thanks for your witness, courage, valor and sacrifice and to all police personnel in this city. Thank you. Reverend Daniel, thank you. And I'm ask, actually going to ask you to remain close at hand as Commissioner Shea and Lloyd Williams come forward as the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce recognizes the valor, the bravery, and the service to the city of Sergeant Kensington Cunningham, Detective Jason Harper, and Police Officer Doris Gutierrez. Please come forward.
but sorry. Y'all got to come back. Gentlemen, you have a special presentation from Cathedral Church of St. John's Divine for each of you. I want, I'm giving you a pin that the cathedral gives out only on special occasions and to very special people. It's a pin from Cartier, and it comes with uh, deep thanks and respect and appreciation. Thank you, sir. I also have a, a bag for you that has the book about the cathedral. And uh, come on. Congratulations to you all. You've heard acknowledgement of Voza Rivers from the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce and I guess former NYPD detective. That goes first in his bio. It's also hard to think of anyone who wraps her arm around Harlem collectively tighter in a motherly embrace than Jackie Rowe Adams. She's with us today and she and Voza are going to present the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce Community Service Awards and that is the day-in, day-out work of our officers and detectives, right? In the community, day-in, day-out, that the commissioner spoke about, building those relationships. So please welcome Sergeant Felicia Montgomery, Detective Kenya Hooks, and Detective Byron Pena, as well as Rosa Rivers and Jackie Rowan. This is an honor. Congratulations to three officers that's well deserving of these awards. People don't know, a lot of people don't know the hard work that Community Fears does, but we know and we appreciate you. God bless you and keep wrapping your arms around the community that you serve. Thank you. Uh, as they say to my fellow police officers, uh, kudos to you guys. Uh, we've seen firsthand the wonderful services that you provide day in and day out. And it's just a pleasure that we can honor you on this special day. So it would be my pleasure and Jackie's pleasure if we could have a photo with you and say thank you, thank you, thank you. You want to say a few? Sergeant Felicia Montgomery, Patrol Bureau, Manhattan North Community Affairs. Detective Byron Pena, 32 Police and Community Affairs. Okay. Detective Kenya Hooks, 28th Precinct Community Affairs. Congratulations to you all. Yeah. Well done. The Commissioner and Ambassador Williams will now be presenting, you don't put that on your business card now, I hope. Now presenting the Leadership Awards, the Executive Leadership Team. And as I acknowledged in the beginning, it looks very different from when I was younger, and I'm sure many of you as well. First up, and in the interest of time, I won't read the entire bio. Most of you are familiar with the honorees as well, but we do want to acknowledge their groundbreaking achievements. And first, Deputy Commissioner Benjamin B. Tucker was first appointed to the NYPD as a trainee in 1969, sworn in as a patrolman in 72, and up the ranks he went. He went on to work in federal government as well. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from John Jay College and a Juris Doctorate from Fordham University's School of Law. And he is the department's third African-American first deputy commissioner and our first honoree today. We welcome the commissioner and the ambassador and the commissioner. I've, I've been asked, I uh, thought you heard enough of me already, but I think it's appropriate just to say a couple, couple words here and real brief. And, 
for Ben, it's simple, for Ben Tucker. Um, I, I had the privilege of being named the 44th police commissioner uh, back in December. No doubt whatsoever in my mind, uh, I couldn't have done the job without the, without the assistance, without Ben Tucker's support, without Ben Tucker's friendship, and for all of those things and many others, I'm eternally grateful. You will never find, a, in my opinion, a more humble, classy gentleman than the gentleman that is bestowed with this honor. And uh, let, me, let me just say, uh, we call him Big Ben. And uh, I cannot tell you how much respect and regard I have uh, for uh, Commissioner Tucker. So without further ado, Commissioner, if you share a few words with us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be real brief. Just uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Lloyd is a special guy, and of course, Jackie and Voza, the whole crew up here um, at the chamber are just amazing. And, um, and also, let me just say, uh, in response to Commissioner Shea's comments to me about me, uh, that the feeling is mutual. I think we make a great team, and, and the rest of these folks here, my colleagues who I've worked with on and off, and Chauncey, and my man over there, I'm not even going to call your name, uh, but he's a Harlem guy. And, and so for me, this is very special. Uh, and since it's the ben, Benjamin Ward uh, uh, trophy, uh, Ben Ward was a mentor to me. And uh, so it means a lot that, that you presenting this award in his name uh, to me. Uh, and I accept it with, uh, with very, much, very much pride uh, at the same time. So. Thank you all very much. Next. Congratulations, Commissioner Tucker. The next honoree is someone I've known a long time, and I'm happy to say that. I wish we had time to hear her sing. I don't think we do. But Chief of Transportation Kim Royster started her career in January 1985 as a police administrative aide sworn in as a police officer in 1987. She has served as commanding officer of the Public Information Division, the Candidate Assessment Division, Manhattan South Investigations. She's the NYPD's first African-American woman appointed to the rank of Assistant Chief. Personally happy to welcome my friend, Chief Kim Royster. As I, as I sit and look at the awardees today and one by one there's a lot of common common threads number one we've known each other a long time in some way shape or form many of them have worked for me kim might be one of the few that has not uh, worked for me personally but that doesn't mean that she didn't catch my eye and, and i've watched kim operate over not just years now really in excess of years we're into decades and the way she carries herself um, through a multitude of assignments. David, uh, David mentioned the singing. I don't know if I've, well, I probably have heard you sing, but I've certainly seen you lead, and uh, I've seen you pray, and I've seen what is in your heart, Kim, and I know that you are doing a fantastic job in your new assignment. And I gotta say that one of the things that struck me was a conversation that Kim and I had sometime in the past and she came up and asked for a meeting with me and uh, made it, in no uncertain terms, made me aware that she had the ability to do more in this agency. And it's a pleasure watching her carry out that promise. I'm very brief on this. Uh, there are certain people you see in the world who always bring a smile to your face and joy to your heart. And Kim Royster is one of those persons who have blessed me by bringing that to me, Kim Royster. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Commissioner, for those sincere remarks. I truly appreciate it and I'm blessed. Ambassador Williams, as you've taken on the new title today, uh, the Board of Directors for the Chamber of Commerce uh, 
also the clergy members here today. I'm just, well, I just wanna say that I'm truly honored to be here. I just, before I begin to talk about Lieutenant Marjorie Lewis, I just want Reverend Daniels to know that I too am a member of North Carolina. Such as Sam Battle is from New Bern. I'm from Washington, North Carolina. So I noticed the twang in your voice. So continue to pray for the NYPD and continue for, to pray for me. So, so let me just say that when I was told that I was going to be the recipient of the Lieutenant Marjorie Lewis Award, I thought about who is Marjorie Lewis other than what I've read about her throughout my years in the NYPD, and more importantly, when Black History Month came about. And, and so I looked at her bio, which is very much truncated in this program, and I said, what am I getting from this? Well, one thing I got from this is that she was a trailblazer. She came into the department in 1951, which we all know we say we came on the job. But more importantly, she did 20 years before she became a sergeant. And then she did 10 more years in the department before she became a, a, a lieutenant. That to me is leadership. That to me is perseverance. And as we look today, she set the path for not just me or my colleague here, but she set the path for over 200 sergeants that we now have in the NYPD. Yes, it does deserve her accord. And over 58 lieutenants, and these are all African American women that actually persevered and was resilient and became leaders. And that's what we are in the NYPD. We're leaders. So Sergeant Felicia Montgomery, thank you for your leadership. And thank you for following in the path of Lieutenant Lewis. And as I close and take my seat, I just want to say that being an authentic leader is a leader that's always looking to help. To be authentic, to be honest, and to do what's right for the community. And as we go through these tumultuous times, service is the rent we all pay for living on this earth. So thank you very much for this award. Congratulations, Chief Kim Royster. Chief of Community Affairs Jeffrey B. Madry joined the NYPD in April 1991, started his career in the 110, and became very visible as a commanding officer of Patrol Borough Brooklyn North, Housing Borough Brooklyn, and the Brooklyn South Task Force. He was promoted to Assistant Chief in March 2015, and now, as we said, lead Community Affairs. He's receiving the Lieutenant Samuel J. Battle Award. Please welcome Chief Madry as the Commissioner and the Ambassador. So Jeff Madry, I don't think there's too many people. It feels like at times that I'll go all over the city and I can be with anyone, but the name that you keep hearing, Jeff Madry, Jeff Madry, what a great job Chief Madry's doing. Um, and and I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I've, I've known Jeff for years. I can just tell you that Jeff gets it. He understands policing. He understands all sides of policing. He understands keeping people safe. It's sometimes how we do it. He's a bridge builder. I can't think of anyone, uh, and I apologize if I'm leaving someone out, but that has done more in terms of building relationships and building bridges with the communities we serve than Jeff Madry, and there isn't really too much more to say than that. Jeff, congrats. Thank you, sir. I, I received a call from uh, great friend and associate of our chamber, Brian Adams. Uh, and Brian, stand up for a second. Uh, and, and Brian uh, called me and he said, Lloyd, uh, you need to meet uh, Chief Madre. Uh, and we'd met before, but not really had an ex extended relationship. And all I said to Brian is, whoever you tell me I need to meet, you know I'm going to do that. 
and he brought uh, Chief Mattery to the office. And uh, for all of the reasons that you said, Brian, and much, much more, it was an honor to meet Chief Mattery. Without further ado, Chief Mattery. Mr. Williams, Mr. Lloyd, to the Greater Harlem uh, Chamber of Commerce, thank you for this distinguished award. To Commissioner Shea, thank you for your leadership and thank you for your trust, most importantly. To Commissioner Tucker, to all my colleagues sitting here, and to all of the officers here in the room, the honorees, our three heroes from December 13th. Let me do this for you. You exemplified this award that I received today, the Lieutenant Samuel J. Battle Award. And to everybody in the room, thank you. You know, Samuel J. Battle, Lieutenant Battle, the first police officer in New York City, right? In the early 1900s. We can imagine what he endured being the first black police officer in the early 1900s. But if you know anything about Lieutenant Sam Battle, who was from Harlem, who is Harlem, a Harlem guy, you know, where he resided after coming up from the South, he was known for walking the streets, walking in the community, talking to people, greeting people, meeting people. So to me, it's just so fitting as the Chief of Community Affairs, a job that really requires to get out into the street and walk with people and talk to people and meet with people that I'm receiving an award named after Big Sam, as they referred to him back in those days, a six foot four domineering figure. It's, it's truly an honor and a blessing. So again, thank you to everybody for this uh, auspicious award. I, I just feel truly humbled and truly blessed. God bless you all, thank you. Chief Madrid, congratulations. It was about almost a year ago to the day that I jumped off the anchor desk, which I'm reluctant to do now because I'm older and it's colder outside. And I just, you know, I did my time out there. But I do get off on important stories. And I went out to a Queens precinct to profile the then recently appointed first black chief of detectives. We ended up on a playground in Queens, and Chief Harrison took a shot, a uh, basketball shot, and he made it into the hoop and thought that, he could play for the Knicks, so he told me. But he did say something about he's the most athletic in the upper ranks of the NYPD. Now, we didn't report that because we couldn't confirm it. But he sure as heck said it that day. But I was happy to meet him and talk to him. Chief Harrison started with the NYPD as a cadet in 1991, appointed as an officer in 92, served as a commanding officer of the 28 and the 32, served as executive officer of the Patrol Services Bureau a 2003 Police Combat Cross recipient. And he is the NYPD's first African-American Chief of Detectives. He's getting the Detective Wesley Redding Award today from the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome. My friend Rodney, before you come up here, David, I got a bone to pick with you. This is the problem sometimes with the media. You have to verify your sources. When, just because Rodney says he's the best athlete doesn't mean Rodney's the best athlete, right? There's a couple other people around that, that I'll leave that for another. A friend, a, a tremendous worker, and, and really an asset to the NYPD. Um, anywhere Rodney has been, he's excelled. Um, just, just mentioned. Um, as, as the chief of detectives now, a position uh, you know, that I know dear and well, I can tell you that Rodney is doing amazing work. And most of the work that is done you know, isn't going to show up on the front pages of the paper. It's the work that's behind the scenes, taking care of the men and women that work for you. It's the work that is done behind the scenes, taking care of the victims of crimes personally, which you know, I, I certainly noticed, and I know a lot of other people notice too, and, and it's not for accolades. It's because you think it's the right thing to do. And whether, sometimes when we were wrong, knocking on that door and saying to the uh, person involved, you know what, we screwed this up. Um, 
It speaks a lot to the person that who you are. Uh, he's a great asset to this department. He's a phenomenal NYPD detectives, and he's a great father. Rodney, congratulations. Let me uh, let me just say, you know, there. I'm, I'm looking at these extraordinary officers, uh, but when I get to Rodney Harrison, Rodney Harrison is my little brother. Um, uh, we speak a minimum of every couple of weeks, and he knows the first thing I'm going to ask is how the girls, how the girls doing. I uh, have such respect for him, uh, uh, and uh, whenever uh, Rodney was not on duty, uh, he was traveling here and there, and I would call him, and he was traveling with the girls to a tournament, uh, to school, to look at different things, et cetera. And so, um, uh, just to uh, what uh, David Ushery said, uh, actually, uh, Rodney's daughters are better athletes than he is, okay? And, and, and if, if that is not true, he will tell you when I give him the mic, because he has to go home to his daughters, who are, by the way, great basketball players. My friend, um, who I respect, love, and admire, Rodney Harrison. Wow, that was a uh, was uh, pretty embarrassing, but I, I appreciate the kind words. Before I go to my right, I'm just going to touch it on the left real quickly uh, for the recipients that, uh, for those of you that received the awards today, I want to congratulate you first and foremost. But I really want to. Uh, Thank Byron Pena and Kenya Hooks for my time frame in the 2-8 and the 3-2. They were community affairs officers for me and they really made my career, as well as Ozzy Collado's back there as well. Thank you for your support when I was up here in Harlem. I would be remiss. And Jackie, I'm gonna be honest with you, like I'm, I'm, I'm choking up a little bit, so I apologize. You've been an absolute humongous big sister to me. You almost, uh, you had a close call with this COVID thing and you took a, you made us, you made us take a step backwards and we all put our prayers out and you recovered and you're, you're back on your feet and uh, I speak for myself and everybody here in the room, we love you and we need you. So thank you. Lloyd, um, you know, first and foremost, uh, thank you for acknowledging the, the men and women that are up here today and the, all the recipients. Uh, and I think you might have underscored our relationship. You know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when we go up in rank, unfortunately, there's, a, there's a, uh, a saying that is often stated that you lose friends as you go up in ranks. Lloyd Williams, you have stayed in contact with me ever since I left the 3-2. You are a true, true friend. You are a pillar, not just in Harlem, but this great city that we're here to protect and serve. And I really wanna make sure that everybody understands that you are just, you're not here just going through the motions, sir. You are an absolutely phenomenal human being and everybody here has made me a better executive, made me a better person, as well as a better human being. So I wanna thank you for your, your love and our relationship, and uh, let's continue to grow for, uh, down the road. And as last but not least, <laughs> Commissioner Tucker, Juanita, Kim, Lola, Jeff, um, thank you. Thank you for your leadership. You know, we have young men and women of color that are right now looking at you and saying thank you, and they have something to look forward to, and it opens up the, the mindset of, hey, listen, I can do it as well. So I want to thank you for everything that you've done to this organization. Um, and last but not least, Commissioner Shea, you came to me about a year ago. You asked me, hey, Roddy, would you be interested in the Chief of Detectives? Um, leaving the Chief of Patrol spot, it was bittersweet, but this was a great position, a great opportunity. 
and uh, you opened up the doors, you let me be the chief of detectives, and uh, you have big shoes I had to fill, and uh, I'm not sure if I'm filling them, but I'm working very hard to make you proud, sir, so thank you for the opportunity, and thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Chief. I want to point out I was not playing any defense on him that day, uh, by the way. Uh, she says, they call me Lola, but Deputy Chief Olafunmi Lola F. Obe is commanding officer of the School Safety Division. She started in 1992 as a cadet assigned to the 24th Precinct, sworn in as a police officer and assigned to the 17th in 1994. She has served at the 19th and 50th Captain, Deputy Inspector, Inspector, she's gone up the ranks. She was Deputy Chief commanding the 28th Precinct and the Police Service Area 3. She's been an Executive Officer. She protects our students. Please welcome the Deputy Chief as well as the Commissioner and the Ambassador. So Lola. Uh, when did we go to the 5-0 precinct? A long time ago, but I, I was a uh, precinct commander in the 5-0. It's the north, northern part of the Bronx, if you're not familiar with it, Riverdale, and I land there as a, a, a new captain, and uh, Lola was assigned there at the time as a lieutenant, I believe, right? And she immediately caught my eye, and she caught my eye because just how she operated and took control of that desk, number one, and as the more I looked and the more I peeled back, who is this person, um, the more I saw that I liked. Incredibly educated, taught her, taught, took care of her police officers that worked for her, but took command of her environment. And then we kind of went different ways, as you often do in the police department, and, and you get to, um, maybe it was 10 years later, I lose track. And now I'm in charge of Comstat, and here comes Manhattan North, if you ever went to Comstat, it's not generally a fun experience. And Lola was up for the 2-8 now. Different environment. And Lola probably still holds a grudge for a couple of those meetings. But what impressed me the most was Lola standing there with, with an awareness of everything that happened in the command and not shying away. She is uh, an incredible woman. She's a fighter. She's now in charge of probably the most important thing New York City has your kids, and that says it all. Lola, congratulations. Uh, let me be, uh, before I make uh, brief remarks on this, uh, uh, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge uh, my uh, great friend, uh, Community Affairs 3 to Oswald Collado. Collado, just raise your hand, so we thank you. Uh, real uh, briefly, I, I mentioned about relationships. Uh, Lola is my little sister, okay? And, and she calls me to share uh, what's going on with her, her uh, new aspirations, and uh, I'm, I'm there to not only listen to give encouragement, but most importantly, the connecting linkage. How did I meet Lola? Uh, I received a call from Rodney Harrison, and Rodney Harrison said, Lloyd, there's a new commander coming up to 2-8, and she's very special, and you need to know her. So there's a connection with all of us, and without further ado, uh, if I were to think of anyone who I would like to be in charge of school security, and you were to ask me uh, to select someone, um, God would allow me to look up and see Obe, as we call her, Obe to be that person, Lola. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Lloyd Williams. Uh, thank you to the board of the chamber. Jackie Bro, what can I say? Um, I want to echo a lot of things that uh, Chief Harrison said. Um, the Harlem is a special place. It's a very special place. You guys are a little snooty when you first come in? Yeah. A little snooty? I remember Lloyd looking at me like, hmm. But when, she, but when Chief Harrison called him, he said, oh, okay, that's our girl, we'll take her. Okay. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you and I thank Jackie. 
the relationship is very special. It's a tough job, um, tough position in the 2-8. Um, Chief Harrison talked about big shoes to, <laughs> big shoes to fill uh, with uh, Commissioner Shea. I had incredible shoes to fill because everybody knew Chief Harrison. And uh, phenomenal place, phenomenal people. Uh, Harlem is, um, you don't come and not love the community. Um, they welcome you with open arms. You also have to embrace with open arms. And like Chief Royster said, it has to be genuine because they know when you're fake and they'll call you out on it. Very, very, very vocal crew. My people here, Greater Harlem, Miss Jackie. Uh, I thank you. I had, um, I would always come to you for advice, for wisdom, for guidance. Uh, your doors were always open to me. Your hearts were always open. And even today, I still call. I called you this morning, Jackie. Wake up. You're lucky I didn't call you at 6 a.m. So um, I thank you. There's, there's a relationship here. I especially want to thank Chief Harrison. Um, like, again, you know, 2 way precinct, there is that thing. I know Brown is back there, so he's listening. Um, it's, a, um, it's a special place when you're the CEO on the 2 way And um, he's been wonderful to me, everyone behind me here. Chief Royster, Steve Holmes, I thank you. I call Holmes my shero. I called her the other day because I needed advice on an event, something I had, and she gave me advice. And I said, yeah, I should have thought about that. But you know what? She calmed me down. And they care. They really, really care. Thank you so much for your love. We, we all, we all, the tough times, but we all support each other. And uh, no matter where I find myself in the world, Harlem will always be home. Um, I wanted to turn, also turn to the honorees today, the other uh, recipients of the awards. I know Chief Harrison gave Pina Colada a shout out, but I'm gonna call my girl Kenya Hooks. She's now Kenya Annette. Kenya, I thank you. Uh, I thank also Borough Community Affairs. I know you guys are here today. You guys do God's work out there, Community Affairs, and I know you have great leadership under Chief Madry, but I thank you because I know so many parades, so many marches. Harlem is home, Manhattan North is also home. Wink, wink. So, um, Kenya, you're special. I love you dearly. Uh, Jackie always used to make jokes about when you see Obey, you see Kenya, which is true. She was my right hand. I was everywhere. She was everywhere with me. So I thank you all for being here today. I thank you for this special award, Police Officer Carl Patchman Award. Amazing woman. I'm going to read up on her. Um, I thank you all, Commissioner. I thank you for your trust in me. I really, really do. Thank you all to the board. Thank you all for this, for this award. God bless. Thank you. Chief, congratulations. Reverend Daniel, somewhere I read that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So while she is last today, she is monumentally a first. Chief of Patrol Juanita Holmes joined the NYPD in July 1987, starting on patrol in the 101st. She served in the School Safety Division, the Domestic Violence Unit, and the Deputy Commissioner's Office of Training, all through the ranks. But she was the NYPD's first African-American woman appointed as a borough commander. And she stands, or will shortly stand before us, as the first woman in the history of the NYPD appointed chief of patrol. Joining the commissioner and the ambassador is Jeff Eaton, who's a first vice president of the NAACP, because the deputy commissioner of community affairs, Wilhelmina Holiday, had a long relationship with the NAACP. So if you will all come forward and chief. Good, af Good afternoon, everyone. The Honorable Wilhelmina Holiday, officially known as Billy Holiday, made history in 1984, but she became the first African-American woman to be appointed by ben Benjamin Ward as Deputy P Commissioner for Community Affairs under Mayor Koch. She went on to serve as uh, under Ray Kelly, Commissioner Kelly, and Mayor Dinkins, and she retired from the Mount Vernon Police Department as Commissioner of Mount Vernon Police Department. I had the privilege of working with her as first Vice President for 10 years as she led the NACP Mid-Manhattan Branch as President. So I am privileged honored today to present the Wilhelmina Holiday Award to the first woman in the history of NYPD appointed Chief of Patrol, Juanita N. Holmes. Thank you. Thank you. 
as we get ready to present the award, the commissioner will follow me. Um, I, I heard uh, from Rodney Harrison about uh, this lady Holmes that I needed to meet. And then I heard from Commissioner Shea about this lady Holmes that I needed to meet. Uh, and I would see her periodically, you know, but we were afar. Uh, and then uh, a few months ago, uh, we were together with Jackie Rowe Adams and I uh, at a program at National Action Network. And I saw this magnificent leadership uh, come out of this lady. Uh, sometimes you're up at the mic and you think it's easy, but it's not. And you have to figure out how you say, what you say, when you say, do you say. And um, Chief Holmes, um, she just blew me away with her calm, with her leadership, with her focus. And uh, I had to rush out after that and I said uh, to uh, Commissioner Shea, she's all that you said she was. And he said, well, wait until tomorrow. And what I did not know is on the next day, the appointment of as chief of patrol was announced. And so um, I'm, I'm, I told her, and I'm telling you all, how proud I am of her. We, we uh, swapped stories a few moments ago on our grandchildren, so you should know that too. Uh, let's hear from the chief. So just before I introduce Juanita, um, as we finish up and get near the finish, Lloyd, again, to the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much. Uh, Reverend Daniels, Thank you for hosting us in this magnificent facility. Jackie, great to see you. So many people, DCPI working on it. A couple that we don't normally talk about, you know, Brian Adams, thank you so much for what you're doing. You're doing great work across the city. Chauncey, I know you don't want to be recognized, but I couldn't say enough for, for what you do behind the scenes all the time. You are loved in this department and you are loved across the city. Is that Tariq in the middle? I got nothing good to say about Tariq Shepard, Captain Tariq Shepard. Um, most importantly, to the men and women on the sidelines with that, with that uniform on, and, and whether it's in you know, executive positions, but really I want to talk about the boots on the ground here. I can't imagine what you did. We, training is one thing, and putting training into action and, and keeping New Yorkers safe is an entirely different matter. Um, whether it's community affairs or whether it's, you know, somebody assigned to a detail for the day or somebody on a traffic post right out on the street right now. Um, you are the men and women that keep us safe. You are the men and women that keep all New Yorkers safe. Please believe me when I tell you I could not possibly be more proud of the work that you do each and every day and especially this year in the most difficult of circumstances. So you should hang your heads high, keep, keep, keep up the great work, and absolutely better times ahead. Now, who's in charge of many of these people? Well, the woman to my left is uh, Chief Juanita Holmes. As I mentioned before, CompStat, um, I was in the Bronx. Juanita w was in Brooklyn for a lot of her career, and I think we first I first noticed Juanita when she was the CEO of the 81st Precinct in Bed-Stuy, probably going back 10 years. And then fast forward, she got a, a promotion and she's in charge of domestic violence. And now I really got to see her. Smart piece of work. Smart. She understands policing. She should because half of her family is in the NYPD, so she should understand it. Um, she gets, as, as the common denominator here is, we've all known each other a long time, and we all know um, the resume, but the resume is really the re least of it, right, Ben? It's, it's what's in your heart. And what's in Juanita's heart is um, pure. That's the easiest way I could say it. Juanita left the job, and she went on to work in the private sector, and. I made a note of it and said, hmm, that's interesting, but I, I wished her well, and we stayed in touch, and we would talk every once in a while on the phone. And then um, 
fast forward last year, we had a couple conversations and no one was happier than me that I was able to entice Juanita uh, back to her passion. I think she found fulfillment in the private sector, but it just wasn't the same. So without further ado, the Chief of Patrol, Juanita Holmes. And on behalf of the National Association for the Advancement of Color Peoples in New York State Conference, Dr. Hazel Duke's President, First Vice President Jeff Eaton, I'm pleased to present the 2021 Deputy Commissioner of Community Affairs William Eaton Holiday Award presented to Chief Patrol Juanita N. Holmes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's tough being last, right? You come between everyone leaving. So first of all, I want to thank all of you. Um, I'm not, I've never worked in Harlem, Manhattan North, but I hang out here all the time. So, so I thank the men and women that keep us safe enough to do so. But I wanna thank all of you, Jackie, Ambassador Lloyd, of course, and uh, especially the commissioner today for not just the words about me and, and all the men and women that work for him, but just today's words to the community. I think uh, just to, I'm one that's always apologetic for the department. No, I have nothing personally to do with some of the things that I'm apologizing for, but I recognize it makes people feel a little bit better. They have a little bit more faith and a little bit more trust um, when you do say that you are apologetic for some of the things that they had to endure. Um, and even though not personally from your hands. So I think you're very courageous. I think your endurance is tremendous, and I really admire you, and I get, have the privilege of doing that up close. So thank you for the opportunity, because it is opportunity. The commission always says there's slim pickings at the top, and it's true. Not everyone will have the privilege of holding this position, and I, I do so with uh, gratefulness and, and tremendous thanks, so thank you. And congratulations to all the honorees here today. Um, you know, I pray for all of you. I pray for the community equally. You know, I'm one of those to see a woman walking home late at night, knowing her only mode of transportation may be public transportation. And she's working a late tour, but she's gotta get home. I can just see that, and I'm praying, on or off duty. And that's just the nature of my heart. So I want you all to know that I pray for all of you every day and always will. But even more importantly, thank you for always showing up. That's from the bottom of my heart. I could not hold this position without you. So thank you for all that you do. And I really don't have much to say about me because I get choked up. And um, just that it's truly an honor to be recognized and thank you. Chief Holmes, congratulations to you. And congratulations to all of our honorees today. And thank you for all that you do, the men and women in uniform and the men and women in plain clothes. Commissioner acknowledging past pain in our communities, understood the critical hard work that goes on right now. We will face challenges ahead, but we will and must get through them together. We're going to leave the final words today to the host of this great facility and this great cavernous hall. I'm going to welcome Vincent Boudreau, who's the president of the City College of New York. Then after that, we will return to the work that calls us. I'll return to the wife who may have filed for divorce, but hope not. Thank you. I uh, won't keep you long, but I do want to invoke my privilege as host to tell you a quick story. Um, in November 2019, we shut this room down because it had been about 25 years since it had been rehabilitated. And we were going to open it up in March. In fact, we are going to open it up, Lloyd, I think, for an event we were going to do together with the chamber. And in that, uh, we, we did some paint and we fixed some of the electrical stuff. But we also wanted to bring this great hall back to what it had been originally. So these flags that you see up here, with Padua, Heidelberg, Leiden, Bologna, Salamanca, all of them, you are the first audience to see these flags in more than 50 years. You are the first audience to be in the Great Hall since we shut it down in November. And, and 
I wanted to call your attention to the flags, not just because it's the only time I'll be able to tell somebody that they're the first ones to see the flag. But if you look at what's on those flags, those are the great universities of Europe back in the turn of the century. And if you look around to these windows, what you see is every one of them is a donated window from one of the great universities or colleges in the United States at the turn of the 19th century. And the reason that they're here in, in the Great Hall, in the sacred center of City College, is because we were a revolutionary institution when we were founded. We were the place where the, the, the leaders of New York decided that we could only be democratic and prosperous and stable if we had an institution that would educate the whole people. Didn't matter what you looked like, how you prayed, where you came from. You know, at first it mattered if you were a man. That mattered for a couple of decades. Now, we graduated our first African-American student in 1864. His great, 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 great granddaughter is currently a student at City College, and she'll be graduating this year. But I say that because when these institutions donated the flags and the stained glass to City College, they did it to welcome a prospect into American education, the prospect that if you don't educate the whole people, you will never build a democracy, you will never build a stable society. You will never build security for people if you don't give everyone the opportunity to move forward. And I say that today because we're doing the same work, you and I, those of you in the NYPD. I see us as being tightly aligned. The work that we do in this institution should make your work easier and, and the reverse is also true. So I am thrilled to be able to host this ceremony. I'm thrilled to do it in this month on this campus. And I look forward to working as an institution, and as an individual with the precincts of NYPD. Thank you all for, for, for coming here. It's been a great pleasure to host you. So how we're gonna close this out is I'm asking all of the honorees to come forward I'm asking Dean Daniels to come forward, Jackie Rowe Adams to come forward. Please just come in front of the podium. Uh, I'm asking David Ushery, who has to get home to his wife very quickly to come forward. Uh, please, just come right up front. Don't worry about it. Uh, Voza Rivers, we need you to come forward. Jeff Eaton, we need you to come forward. And of course, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Vince, as I call him, we need you to come forward. Why don't we find a way to get uh, them integrated in terms of that, okay? Okay. Yeah, let's get some more uniform over here.